With over 575 hotels across six continents, Hilton Hotels and Resorts has become the place to be for travelers. Hilton manages more than 500,000 rooms across the globe. In today's episode, we will discuss how a cheeky bank manager helped develop one of the most popular brands in the world, Hilton. Conrad Hilton was born in San Antonio, New Mexico. He was the first child of Augustus and Mary. Young Hilton started working with his dad as soon as he was tall enough to look above the counter. If he was not working with his dad, he was spending time with his mother discussing fate. With a world at war, every young boy wanted to help out his country. In 1917, Hilton joined the army and went to Europe. While in Europe, he received a letter from his mother. The letter said that his father had passed away. Hilton returned home with $5,000 in savings. As now he was not getting a paycheck, he knew he had to do something. He looked around and got curious about the world of finance. With the money, he wanted to buy a bank. After talking to various bankers, he found a bank that he could afford. Hilton raised some more funds from family and friends and met with the banker. The banker, however, had changed his mind. Looking to get some extra cash last minute, he raised the price. Hilton only had so much money in his pocket and tried negotiating with the banker, but he had made his mind up. Hilton, furious, walked away. This anger in him was about to change his life. He went to the hotel he was staying at, Mobley, and approached the owner asking him if the hotel was on sale. The owner was looking to retire and told Hilton, if he could come up with $40,000, the hotel is his. Hilton went back to his mother and friends, convincing them that if they were to invest in him, he would make it a success. After coming up with enough funds, Hilton bought the hotel. Within a week, the hotel was making $2,000, but he was not satisfied. He knew he could do a lot better. He redesigned the lobby by adding more rooms, turned closets into gift shops. More rooms meant more customers, more customers meant more money. Soon, he had made enough money to buy more hotels. By 1925, Hilton had eight locations. At 40, Hilton was known for his hotel deals. But then the world saw the worst economic downturn in history, the Great Depression. Hilton was out of business. In less than a year, he lost everything but one location. No one was coming in to stay. To save expenses, the inkwells were dried out. He was $500,000 in debt, and with a lease payment of $40,000 coming up, bankruptcy seemed to be the only option. He did not have enough to feed his family or pay for gas. To find funds, he held a meeting with his suppliers. But to drive to meeting, he needed gas in the car. Having no gas money, he borrowed $50 from one of his bellboy, Eddie. Hilton was walking in the meeting with a plan. He assured his suppliers that the depression will not last for long. And as the nation gets out of depression, he plans on taking Hilton Global. They could choose not to invest in him and hope some other hotel takes over the world. Or they could invest in Hilton and become a supplier of a global brand till his remaining days. Hilton was successful in raising enough funds. After depression, Conrad's business grew stronger. Because he didn't file for bankruptcy, he was able to buy more hotels. In 1947, his mother passed away. To overcome the grief, he grilled himself into doing more work. Hilton bought the largest hotel in the world, Waldorf Astoria. In 1954, Hilton made the largest real estate transaction of $111 million by purchasing the Stadler Hotel Company. When Hilton passed away, he was worth half a billion dollars. Hilton was a man of faith. He prayed for world peace. One of his achievements was the Conrad Hilton Foundation, where he generously helped children in the healthcare sector. Hilton said that his success started with a dream. So, do dream. Until next time, have a good one.